By now, Edward, the hammer of the Scots, was old and sick. He tried to lead an army back into Scotland, but it became obvious he'd never get there. A few miles north of Carlisle, on his deathbed, he gave instructions to his 23-year-old heir, Edward, Prince of Wales. A hundred knights were to crusade, carrying his heart. The army should carry his bones to defeat Scotland, and the prince was not to have anything further to do with his very, very close friend, Piers Gaveston. The king was dead. Edward II was ready to party. Edward was physically tall and muscular, but his similarity to his father ended there. He had no interest in being a warlord. His father had taken him on campaign, but the prince traveled with a pet lion and a troop of Genoese fiddlers. Edward I had tried to change his character by assigning him a charismatic squire who was good at tournaments. This had backfired spectacularly. Edward and Piers Gaveston had fallen in love. Gaveston was banished, but obviously he was now coming back. Gaveston was an elegant, charming, artistic man who loved showing off his power over Edward and could still easily beat more macho men in tournaments. This was a recipe for a short life. Before his coronation, Edward married Isabella, the sister of the King of France. Then Gaveston was seen wearing Isabella's wedding jewelry. At the coronation, he showed up carrying the crown, wearing royal purple and pearls. Some of the barons wanted to kill him on the spot. Eventually, of course, they did kill him, here at Blacklow Hill in Warwickshire, having chased the king and peers round the country. And then Robert Bruce, renegade king of Scotland, set about completing his war of independence. He captured Edinburgh and besieged the last English stronghold, Stirling. In 1314, Edward II set out to relieve the city. The battle at Bannockburn, just outside the castle, was a total disaster for the English. Edward's troubles were made worse by the fact that the climate, which had been benign for about 100 years, took a dramatic and long-term turn for the worse in 1315. As harvests failed and cattle died, the barons said that his extravagance and lack of direction was intolerable, so the grown-ups took over. The Earl of Lancaster, head of the council, was now acting as king, keeping Edward on a daily allowance of ten pounds. But he still had friends. He turned to Hugh Dispenser and his son. Dispenser was the only nobleman who had supported Gaveston. Eventually, they managed to help him break free of the power of Leicester and the other great nobles. But no one had a solution to the unending run of bad harvests. And the apparent enthusiasm of the dispensers to enrich themselves made Edward's rule deeply unpopular, especially with his queen, Isabella. In 1325, she got away to France and refused to come home unless the dispensers were thrown out. Worse she'd fallen passionately in love with an ally of Leicester's who was hiding out in France, Roger Mortimer. Isabella and Mortimer gathered an army and invaded England in September 1326. As homophobia turned into mob rule, Isabella and Mortimer were joyously welcomed to London. In a few months, it was all over. The elder dispenser, almost 90 years old, was hanged without being given time to take off his armor. The younger had his genitals cut off. Then he was disemboweled. The object was for Isabella and Mortimer to rule in the name of her 14-year-old son. But the boy refused to accept the crown without his father's consent. So Edward, dressed in black, was deposed in a solemn ceremony. The steward of his household broke his staff of office he broke down and cried. He was eventually moved to Barclay Castle, where he was encouraged to die as soon as possible. He was denied sufficient food and clothing, he was prevented from sleeping, he was crowned with a crown of hay and shaved with ditch water. Isabella, generally known as the She-Wolf of France, reproved the guards for their mild treatment. 
Since he would not die by himself, he was murdered in his bed on the 21st of September. It's said that he was raped with a red-hot poker. His dying shrieks were heard throughout the castle. A